This is the Edge of Innovation, Hacking the Future of Business. I'm your host, Paul Parisi. And I'm Jacob Young. On the Edge of Innovation, we talk about the intersection between technology and business, what's going on in technology, and what's possible for business. Welcome to the Edge of Innovation. Today I'm speaking with well-known, globally known, famous, well anyway, in my book, he's one of the best photographers that's ever lived. His name is Arthur Morris, and he is known for his bird photography, as well as other things, but just has been a tremendous inspiration to me personally to be able to go out and take pictures. And I've, uh, We've interviewed him before, and we asked him to come back to talk about some new things that are going on in his life with photography. Welcome, Arthur. Howdy, Paul. How are you? I am good. I am good. It's delightful to be talking with you again. So when we talked, well, I guess it was last year, you had just made a switch in technology from Canon. You were an explorer of light with Canon, which is like their most prestigious photography recognition. And you now are in the Nikon camp, which seems like it's an impossible transition to make, but you did that. Is, is that true? And how is that going? Life is funny. We have all kinds of twists in the road. So yeah, I switched to Nikon about a year and a half ago. And then last January, I started playing around with some Sony stuff. Oh, wow. So right now, I'm using both Nikon and Sony. And by the way, thanks for your kind words during the introduction. And yes, I was a Canon Explorer of Light for 18 years. And we went over all that stuff last time. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm unsupported except by myself. So Nikon doesn't do anything for me. Sony doesn't do anything for me. And I'm fine with that. We're having a good old time. Wow. Two days ago, I got a big box by FedEx. I purchased a Sony 600 millimeter lens for about 13000 Wow. And I've been playing with that for a couple of days. How is it? Pretty damn good. They have a couple of great camera bodies and... I got one of the new ones, the A7R3, and I was having a little trouble making sharp images for the first day or two, but after looking at this morning's pictures, I seem to have that down. What was the issue? Oh, I don't really know. Sometimes just getting familiar with the equipment and the autofocus, I saw right off the bat that with Sony, I need to use a very small AF point and get it right on the bird's face. Okay. The camera I'm using is 61 megapixels, which is a huge file. Biggest files I ever work with probably by 50%. But what folks don't understand is that the more megapixels that are packed onto the sensor, the less forgiving mm -hmm. the system is to any errors that you might make in focus or in keeping the lens still. Well, because you're going to see all that micro movement, I guess, or that misfocus. Is that true? Yeah, if you're slightly off in focus or the subject moves slightly, that move, the motion or the, the missed focus is going to be more evident with the larger files than with smaller files. Uh -huh. One of the reasons I turned to Sony, the camera bodies are so much lighter. Hmm. And the 600 that I'm working with is about two pounds lighter than the Nikon 600. And some of my frustration with Nikon, I mean, we spoke last year that for flying birds, for mm -hmm. me, Nikon was 100 times better than Canon. But there were advantages to Canon. Canon was much better when you use the teleconverter, mm -hmm. either the 1.4 or the 2X. Nikon, not so great and pretty much useless with the 2X. So I'm hoping to do really well with both teleconverters. And then Sony A9 has the world's best autofocus for birds in flight. So my plan today is because I've been switching back and forth between Sony and Nikon, which really hasn't been fair to Sony because I've used Nikon for a year and a half and Sony for five minutes. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give it a good test from now till the end of the year, at least till the end of November, and just use the Sony stuff. And I'm pretty sure that as I get more familiar with it, that I'll be able to reap more of the benefits. So in by familiar with it, what are you learning or what are you discovering that allows you to make better images? Well, you've heard the word ergonomics. Mm -hmm. So each system, whether it's Canon or Nikon or Sony, the ergonomics of the camera body are completely different. And to some degree, the lens too, although the lenses are much more similar. The menu systems, the buttons on the cameras handling the camera you know the more familiar you are with your gear the better you're going to do okay so by switching back and forth again i haven't become really accustomed to everything that's new and different about sony i see so by giving it a trial you know by the end of november and possibly before i'm going to either sell all my sony gear or sell all my nikon gear 
Wow. So now what, let, let's go through a day in the life of getting used to a new camera. So you got this new lens. What do you do? It came yesterday, you said, right? Three days ago, Three actually. days ago. Okay, so t- take me through the last three days. Did you go shooting with it in the first hour? Not in the first hour. It came in the afternoon, and I'm lucky in that there's almost always something to shoot down by the lake by my house. Okay. So the first morning I went out, and I didn't have any really good chances, and I was working from the car with a wonderful new tripod we have called the Flex Shooter Pro, and I looked at the pictures, and I was sort of disappointed. So wait a minute. When, when did you look at the pictures? When you shot them, or...? No, when I get back in the house, I almost never check on the back of the camera. I wait till I get home, download the stuff in two minutes, and then go through it. Okay, so you, now I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm, I think it'd be interesting for our listeners to go through this. So you open the box, you got it, the next day you went out to the lake, took a bunch of pictures? Yeah, I, think, I figured out what plate I would need to mount the big lens on to the Flex Shooter Pro that goes on top of an Enduro tripod. That's part of the problem. The plate is less than ideal. I see. So I need to get a low foot. In any case, I went out. I shot some from the car. I shot some from the tripod out of the car. And I wasn't thrilled with the images. But part of the problem was I hadn't updated Capture One to see the new Sony images from the A7R4. Okay. So I did that. I did that yesterday. I went shooting again on Monday morning. And I did a little bit better. But I'm sort of freaking out a little bit, like, oh, my God, 13 grand, I can't even make a sharp picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could imagine, yeah. So then I realized that I needed to narrow down the AF point and use small, flexible spot. I forget what they call it exactly. Mm -hmm. And I went out this morning, and I stopped down a little bit. Instead of shooting wide open at 5.6, I was shooting at F8, taking really great care to keep the lens still, lock the tripod up a little bit, work at F8 and get the AF point right on the bird's face. Okay. And I was very happy with today's images. Actually, when you guys called, I was just finished processing my first A7R3 600 image. Oh, cool. So just for our listeners that don't know, so you went to F8, so you got a little more depth of field, a little less criticalness of the focus, but you spotted it on the the face of the bird so you got good depth of field maybe back a little bit and forward a little bit so that you'd have that focus that critical focus when you did that were you moving the autofocus dot around on the camera or were you moving the camera well one of the beauties of sony is the ease with which you can move the af point around okay it's controlled by a little joystick on the back oh okay that falls just under your thumb Mm mm-hmm and it moves quickly and easily. So I was on the vulture's face this morning, and if I wanted to change the image design a little bit, I just click one to the right, one up, and get a little bit better framing. I see. So that that's a beautiful feature. And then another thing, you know, when I used Canon with a 500 f4 or a 600 f4 lens, I used the 2x teleconverter, the doubler, half the time, and I did very well. And I could make sharp images with down to a sixtieth of a second. With the, with the doubler working either at 1,000 millimeters or 1,200 millimeters, a big amount of magnification. But with Nikon, I bought the new 2X, made a very few sharp pictures, but it really has a problem focusing, and it pretty much has a reputation as being a clunker. Hmm. So I've, been, I've been trying to sell it, and I can't even sell it. Interest. So, you know, that was a big advantage for Canon over Nikon. Mm-hmm. So even, even with the 600 and the 1.4, which is not nearly as extreme as the 2X. With Nikon, when you get away from the center AF points, you move it close to the edge, mm-hmm. it sort of becomes blind. Really? It, it just it won't focus, no. Wow. And, and that's even with, you know, that's with a 5.6 lens. Like, Nikon makes this amazing lens, the 500 PF. Mm-hmm. It's sort of similar to the Canon DO lenses mm-hmm. made with lightweight lens elements instead of glass. And if I do go to Sony, I mean, if I had a bet right now, especially after this morning, I'd say in three months I'm going to be selling all my Nikon gear. Wow. But, the you know, with Canon, the lens I missed the most was the 100 to 400 mm-hmm. too, because it focused down to a little over three feet. Wow. lightweight, versatile. Nikon has an 80 to 400, but it only focuses to seven feet. So with the minimum focus distance more than twice that of Canon, you sort of in trouble when you can get really close to the birds. Right. So one of the nice things about Sony is their 100 to 400 
focuses down also to 0.98 meters, a little over three feet. Would you have ever thought 10, 15 years ago, if you'd be sitting around talking about buying Sony equipment and throwing away all your Canon or Nikon equipment? Nope. I just, I mean, it's amazing to me to think that the company we used to buy Walkmans from is making cameras that a professional of your caliber can, can be delighted in. Well, my understanding, Paul, is that Sony, and I may be wrong in this, but I think it's right, Sony has been making the sensors for all the Canon and Nikon digital cameras for years. Sure. So now I want to go back and talk about, so you got up this morning. What time did you get up to go shooting? To go shoot? Yeah. Well, I didn't get up to go shoot, but I got up at about quarter to four. I slept about seven hours, so Uh that was nice. And I finished working on a blog post that was really interesting. Talked about what goes on when you're teaching, when you have a whole slew of folks who could appear to give a rat's ass about what you're saying in the field. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, they know everything, they're experienced photographers, and, and lots of good photographers don't need a lot of help in the field. They come on an IPT to get to a great place. And just the fact that in general, the more questions folks ask, the more energized and involved the leader becomes. Mm-hmm. And if everybody goes off doing their own thing, less involvement from the leader. So you didn't shoot today? You shot yesterday, though. When did oh, you? Oh, no, I got, I got up. Yep. I finished the blog in about an hour and a half. Had my protein shake, and then at about 10 after 7, I drove down to the lake. Okay. And I did the first half of my walk, about a mile. Then I got in the car and drove to the vulture tree, and there were lots of birds and lots of stuff to photograph. Not much flight, but lots of perch birds, and I shot for about an hour and a half. I packed the car up, put the lens on the seat, got in the car to look for some cranes, which are a staple of Indian Lake Estates photography, and I drove about 20 feet. <laughs> And three frames flew right at me and landed right next to the road, 20 feet from the car. So first I tried hand-holding, and last year, about a year and a half ago, I fell in my home in a puddle caused by my swimsuit, Mm -hmm. and I had a complete and total tear of the infraspinatus muscle in my left shoulder, the torn rotator cuff. But I opted not to have the surgery, and I'm doing basically great. But hand-holding the 600, even the light Sony one, is a little problematic for me. If I turn my body sideways and I use what I call the Olympic rifle shooter posture, Mm -hmm. with my elbow tucked in, I can do it. But I feel a little strain on my shoulder with the 600. Mm -hmm. So better than to be on the tripod and that's what i did and i got some super stuff so how many shots did you take i took about 300 okay and And that's more than i would normally take right because i was trying different stuff you know with new gear i see okay and also you don't want to shoot too much with a 61 megapixel camera (laughs) yeah that's right what size memory cards do you have I use Delkin uh, 64 and 128 gigabyte. Wow. Ultra 2, for the first time in, in my life, I need to use the little cards. Mm-hmm. SD. Right. But you need the ultra fast for the Sony cameras, and you have no problem then with buffer or reading and writing to the cards. So wow. that's what I use. And I've been using Delkin flash cards pretty much since about 2001 when I started digital. Right. Super reliable. They take care of me, and I take care of them. Okay, so you, you made some shots, got 300 in, on cards, you make your way back, what did you do next? After I was done with the cranes, I take a little ride around just birding, because I keep a list when I walk. Then I parked back by the pier and finished up my walk. I did about another mile and change. So I did 2.8 miles altogether. Came home, stuck the card in, into the reader, and peeked at a few of them in Capture One and said, uh, much better. Okay. No need to panic and send the lens back. And wh- one other thing on that, it's funny when you're using big lenses or big lenses with teleconverters. This morning I shot mostly with the 600 and the 1.4, but I've counseled a bunch of friends over the years. I remember in particular my friend Ned Harris, he's from Tucson, mm-hmm. and he had bought the new Canon 500 and a 2X teleconverter because he was inspired by the stuff that he saw me making mm-hmm. at 1,000 millimeters, and he got the lens, and he shot for a couple of days and says, Artie, I can't make a sharp picture. So I said, stick with it, just give it a few more days, and you'll get it. It's just the way your body connects with the lens and ha- holding the, the lens still. In a couple of days, he called back and he said, I got it. They're all sharp. 
Wow. So that may have been in part what happened to me. So many times we want some perfect quantitative answer, and it's just not there. Well, we want it immediately, too. Or sooner. Or sooner. Well, we've had a good time here talking with Arthur Morris, a renowned, world-renowned bird photographer. It's been such an inspiration for me to get to know you and your work and your books and your websites, and it's been fantastic. And I appreciate you coming on now a second time, and we'll look forward to your now new journeys with Sony. It's been a pleasure as always, Paul. The Edge of Innovation is brought to you in partnership with Savior Labs. Savior Labs exists to help businesses mature and strategize for the future. Learn more about Savior Labs at SaviorLabs.com. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Edge of Innovation, Hacking the Future of Business. For the show notes and more information about Paul, please visit paulparisi.com. The Edge of Innovation is produced by Jacob Young in conjunction with copious amounts of coffee. Music on today's episode was from bensound.com. Paul can be found on Twitter at pdparisi and on LinkedIn at linkedin.com slash pdparisi. This episode, like all our episodes, is transcribed and available at paulparisi.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.